Hello, this is Sandy Treffer. Welcome to my tutorial video on how to make my Crazy Cat Lady mini album that I designed for Country Craft Creations and Authentique. First, I want to share with you the products that I got from Country Craft Creations to work with. This is the Companion Collection by Authentique. I got the 12 by 12 sticker sheet which has some really cute images for both dogs and cats, but I'll be using the cat ones for my album some really cute ones here that I really really love and then of course you've got the cut aparts or the cute sayings that these will be great the back side is for dogs and one side is for cats so that's what I'll be using so if you want to make one for dogs you certainly can do that with this collection here's the cut aparts with the cats I just love those with the glasses on there's a boy and a girl so these are really really cute you get two of these in your collection so you also get the one for the dogs then the pattern papers this is a really cute paw print and heart and on the back side is a collar then of course you have the cats on one side dogs on the other and then there's this real pretty word print with cats on the bottom edge and then dogs on the other side and I'm just focusing on the cats right now. So here's a nice plaid and some newsprint. Floral. The floral is really pretty. And then on the back side, you have uh, some more paw prints. And then we have a stripe with more paw prints. And then you also got the um, coordinating authentic cardstock in the dots and stripes that will uh, go with the collection really well. You can order that from countrycraftcreations.com. I'm not showing all the colors here. I also got a black, the red, the black, the blue, and the yellow. <clears throat> these work great for photo mats or adding in. Uh, I'm going to make the cat out of some of these papers. And then I also got chipboard, so you need two pieces of chipboard for this project. You will also need a package of black cardstock. I'm using Country Craft Creations Artisan cardstock that I ordered from the online store at countrycraftcreations.com. Let's get started on this album. I'll be using the art glitter glue that dries clear and also quarter inch score tape. I have pre-cut my chipboard pieces and I have pre-cut my black cardstock that I will be using on the cover to wrap it. Place a thin line of glue along one edge of the cardstock so that you can seam it together, the two pieces together to make one long piece to wrap the cover. So just have a thin line. I'm lining it up on my grid so that I can keep it fairly straight. And I'm just going to line this up. So this is your 12 inch long piece and then your 7 inch piece that you cut and both are 9 inches tall. Burnish that down, wipe off excess glue and burnish down. You want to make sure that it has stuck down really good. And burnish on both sides just to make sure. Next we're going to take the chipboard pieces that we cut and you're going to, I'm laying them out first so you want the wide one and then the narrow one, a wide one, a narrow one, and a wide one. So this is how it's going to fit along this chipboard piece. Now I did cut my cardstock a little bit too short so I did have to redo that but the measurements are correct for you so you will have plenty of cardstock. I will leave about a half inch to three quarter inch edge on each end and along the top and the bottom. So I'm applying glue to one piece of the chipboard and then I'm going to attach it down onto the cardstock leaving that half inch gap on the left and at the top and the bottom Put it down as straight as you can. I just slide mine a little bit here. And then burnish that down. And then you will take your quarter inch score tape. And this will become a spacer. It will also help to hold your uh, the groove or the fold line of your cover once you put your inside papers down. So put this right up against the edge of your chipboard. I'm 
and then you will glue the second piece down. So I'm going to go ahead and speed up this video. You will continue putting down chipboard and then score tape as a spacer until you have it completely onto the cardstock and then we'll be ready to wrap the covers. Stand the chipboard up onto the cardstock to get a crease fold line. Do this for both long sides and also for the ends. Take your scissors and cut out to the corner on all four corners. Just cut out that corner piece of cardstock. Kind of cut at a little angle. Just be careful to not cut out the very tip or in too far because you don't want to have chipboard showing. So just cut out those corners. This is a, a method of mitering your corners. And then you're going to take glue. Or if you want to use score tape, that's fine. But I do like to put glue along the top edge of the chipboard. So I'm just peeling back my tape backing a little bit along the edge so that I can go ahead and attach the cardstock down. So I'm applying glue to the whole, the entire length of this right up against the chipboard and then add more to the cardstock and then fold it down hold it and burnish to make sure it all sticks down also wipe off any excess glue that you might have and I like to use my bone folder and also press down into those fold lines, the quarter inch sections that you have, and just burnish really, really well and get a good stick on this. So you will do this for all four sides. I like to do the two long sides first and then the two short sides. The album cover is assembled. You can fold it up to see how it looks. And next we will put the paper on the inside and create the hinge. To cover the inside of your album, cut three pieces of cardstock, six inches by eight inches. I have already covered the center section and burnished in the fold lines. So just use glue around all the perimeters on one side, and then a squiggle amount of glue on the inside. and attach it down to cover the entire inside of your album. And just make sure that you use your bone folder to burnish really well or a spatula and then also you want to burnish in the score line, I mean the fold line of the album where the uh, score tape 
is, and make sure that you did pull the tape backing off. So I'm going to go ahead and put the left side down here, and then also I'll do the right side, and then the inside of the album will be finished and will be ready to start on the hinge piece. Before we put the, uh, make the hinge piece, let's go ahead and put our magnets on our cover so that it can uh, be closed up and holding its shape. So I'm using two large magnet sets. You can order these from countrycraftcreations.com and I'm placing my ruler to kind of line them up evenly. So I'm placing the plus down, pull the sticky, backing off the sticky part and stick it down. So what you want to do is make sure you've left enough margin from the edge so that your pattern paper will cover the magnets. Now I'm placing the opposing magnets, the minus ones, down onto these and then pull the backing off of both magnets. And then go ahead and close up your album cover and make sure you get it squared and lined up. And then press the magnets down. I'm just checking to make sure it's lined up the way I want it to be and then gently open it separating the magnets and then take a bit of score tape and cover each magnet you want to make sure that they stay in place until you're ready to put your pattern paper on your album cover We have the album cover assembled, but I think before we go ahead and make the hinge that I will go ahead and show you the video clip on how to make the cat for the cover of your album. Now you'll see that my cat is on the left. I have already completed her, but I want to show you how I drew it out. Now this is all free hand drawing. You might be able to find a template online. I'm not sure. I just drew out the basic shape of the cat on copy paper for my pattern. I made the bottom flat and I did measure the album cover to get the width of my cat there at the bottom and now I'm just drawing what I call a peanut shape for the inside of the cat and then also you want the ears but I want them all the way down to that peanut shape so the one on the left I need to draw down a little further and you will cut these pieces out first, you know, the largest shape first, and then cut out the inner piece and the ears. And I also drew out the mouth, the muzzle of the cat. It's just another peanut shape, I call it. And then I, I drew the little arms with the little paws on the end, just three little toes. This does not have to be perfect. This is paper piecing. You're going to cut it out. You cut out your pattern pieces first and then glue it to black cardstock and cut out the perimeter around it. The eyes are punched little circles. The mouse is also drawn out. I'll do that on the side. You want the tail, I need it a little bit more rounder. You just work with it, cut it until it looks the way that you want it. So this right here, all of this you will cut out a pattern paper, then glue it to your black cardstock and cut around that. The whiskers are strips, very narrow strips of black cardstock. Here I'm going to draw the little mouse which is just a teardrop shape. And then you can either cut by hand the ears, the one ear, or you can use a circle punch. And then I made the tail is made out of black uh, button twine. So that's how you make your pattern. If you wanted to do a dog you would just change the shape of your ear, the shape of your tail, make a bigger muzzle, have a bigger tongue, the nose for my cat is just a triangle and then on the sticker sheet there was a red triangle and a, just a little oval shape for the tongue that goes underneath. In this video clip this is the original pattern that I drew out and I just drew the main piece first and cut it out. So you will cut your pattern out out of your copy paper or if you want to use heavier uh, cardstock for your pattern piece you can do that. So just cut around the edges and get your pattern and get it ready to cut out your first pattern paper layer of your cat. 
Now once I cut this out, I'm going to lay this down onto my album cover and make sure that it's the right size. Now part of it will stick out over the edge of the cover and that's fine. I wanted the ears to stick out over the top just a little bit. The base of the cat is straight, so I wanted that to fit flush against the base of the co uh, cover of the album. I'm going to use this yellow tan color coordinating cardstock by Authentique that coordinates with the uh, Companions collection and I'm taking my little cat pattern which is the largest one, the largest size, and I'm just going to place it down over this and I'm going to cut it out. To give the base cat shape stability, I did cut out two pieces of black cardstock. I have them layered underneath this pattern paper and I'm cutting all three out at the same time. You'll need this so that it has the back black ground on the back and also to make it a little sturdier. The base pieces are cut out and now I'm taking my glue and I'm going to layer the two black cardstock pieces together and then glue the patterned cat shape on top of these. Go ahead and ink the edges of your cat shape. I'm using the Prima Black ink that I purchased from CountryCraftCreations.com and a sponge applicator. So I'm just inking the edges all the way around on the pattern section of this cat. I've already cut out the little ear shapes out of the blue coordinating cardstock from Authentique and I also cut them out of the black cardstock and I have them laying on my cat. I haven't glued them down yet. And now I'm just cutting out my smaller peanut shape of the cat out of the blue. Straighten up any edges you need with your scissors to get the shape right and then ink the edges of the blue section of the cat and also ink the blue sections of the ears. Glue the blue section of the cat down onto the black cardstock and then you're going to cut a little border around the entire piece. Now mine is not perfect. I'm okay with that because cats are not perfect. If you live with cats, nothing in your house is perfect. Your couch is scratched up. Their tower is a mess. The rugs are always ruffled up. Nothing's ever perfect. So just cut about a eighth to a quarter of inch margin, whatever you like, around all the edges. And on mine you'll notice when you look at the finished one that on some sections it's wider than the others and that could be considered a shadow. So that's okay. So just freehand cut around that. Don't be afraid. It doesn't have to be perfect. And just cut out a black border. So this helps to show up more against the other patterned uh, paper on the, the base of the cat. So I'm just cutting this out and get it ready to attach.
I've glued the ears down with the black border around them and then I glued the blue section of the cat with the black border down onto the pattern part of the cat and now I have cut out the little muzzle and I'm outlining that with black cardstock also and I'm just straightening it up where it might need a little bit on the edge now I'm going to glue this down onto my cat onto its face and I'm only going to put glue on each end on the left and the right I want it to not be laying flat down on the cat I want it to have a little lift there in the center so I'm just going to curve it up a little bit and let's see where we want to put it so we're going to put it like that now I think I might put some glue along the top edge but not the bottom so turn it over and on the back side put some glue on the each side and then right along the top and then we're just going to glue that down so that it kind of stands up just just a little bit there in the center and hold that down until it dries and wipe off any excess glue And then I cut out of some of the red coordinating cardstock, just a tiny little half oval for the tongue. And I'm going to glue it just up underneath the little muzzle there with just a little bit of it sticking out. I don't know about your cats, but my cats, when they're happy, they do have their little tongue sticking out just a little bit sometimes. So just stick it underneath just a little bit. And I'm cutting out just a little triangle for the nose. And like I said later on, I did see that the um, thicker sheet had a red triangle so I put that on top of the the black but I'm just cutting out a triangle then rounding two of the corners and I'm just going to glue that right there in the middle for a little cat nose Next, take some of your yellow scraps and just cut random spots and glue them on your cat, on the blue body of the cat. So I have some here on the side, one at the top, on their head, just random little spots to give it some contrasting color and make it look more like a cat. Then use a small circle punch, mine's a half inch one, and cut two black eyes. Out of, surf, uh, out of cardstock and then go ahead and glue those onto the cat okay so he's coming right along he's looking like a kitty cat next on your trimmer take scraps of black cardstock that are probably about three four inches long and cut very 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 narrow strips for the whiskers so these are like a sixteenth of an inch probably width of cardstock and I cut out several probably about six or eight to determine how many I want to put on my cat and then you're going to glue these onto the muzzle just stagger them out the way it would look on a cat, trim them as needed, take a pencil or some tool and curl the ends of them up and uh, attach them down really well on the ends that are attached to the cat and then they will mine stick out beyond the body of the cat.
Next you will want to cut out the tail and the paws out of your pattern paper and then also mat it on black cardstock like I'm doing here for the tail. And then go ahead and glue these onto your cat. For the paws you can leave them up or unglued a little bit so that you can glue the little mouse in before you actually attach everything down. So I'm going to go ahead and speed this up. This is really a matter of cutting and matting and then just gluing in place. I cut the mouse out of some of the coordinating red cardstock and I punched the ear out with the half inch circle and I'm just gluing the little ear there on the top of the mouse. And I have a piece of uh, black button string that I'm going to glue on as a tail. that dry and then glue the mouse down onto the cat underneath slightly the left paw and then onto the right one like that and then I'm going to attach the end of the tail down on the left side just a tad of glue to hold it down because I want it to kind of curl just a little bit here Maybe a little bit right there in the center on the paw. Not a lot, just enough to hold the string. Now you'll want to add a little bit of ribbon for a collar. And then go ahead and add any decorations that you want to add to your cat, like flowers and different embellishments. The Whatever you choose. So I'm going to go ahead and speed this up. I'm not going to give verbal instruction on the rest of the decorating for the cat. And then once it's done, just set it aside. We don't want to put it on the album until we've like worked on the pages, the base pages, and some of the pattern. So you want to just set that aside for now.
Now let's go ahead and make our hinge piece, which will have three hinges on it. So you need to cut your cardstock. I'm using the red coordinating cardstock uh, pattern paper, and you need one at five inch by seven and a half inches. Then put it in your scoreboard, score the five inch side at a quarter inch, half inch, one, one and a half, two, two and a half, three, three and a half, four, four and a half, and four and three quarters. This will give you a little quarter inch to fold under on the right side, right and left side, and these will be half inch hinges with a half inch gusset space in between. So go ahead and score the quarter inch back on itself and burnish that. This is to give it uh, extra thickness on the edges and more stability. And we'll do that on both sides. So they want to be folded under the same direction. This album is only going to have three page sets, so we only need three hinges that will go into the narrow little spine section. Take your glue and glue these quarter inch section down onto the back of the hinge piece. Make sure you burnish it down, make sure it sticks down good. And do the same for the other side. Now you want to fold and glue your hinge pieces together. So from one side, score one and two in the middle. So you have two half inch ones, the very first two. And what I'm doing, I'm going ahead and scoring all the ones that will be hinges. So you're going to have the first two glued together. You're going to skip one half inch one. You glue the next two together and skip another half inch and then glue the last two together. So I'm putting glue on the very first half inch section after the quarter inch. Glue it to the next half inch and burnish that down. So now you have the quarter inch double thickness and then you have one half inch hinge Just like that. There's your quarter inch, there's your one hinge standing up. Now skip a half inch, the next one, put down glue, and glue two together. So I have one half inch that doesn't have any glue, the next one I put glue on it, and glue it to the one adjacent to it. So you have a half inch section that has no glue. It is attached to nothing. The next two are attached together. So burnish that down. Now you have a quarter inch space on the side, a hinge sticking up, a half inch space, and another hinge sticking up. So the, you skip one more half inch and the last two half inch sections are glued together. I know that hinges assembly can be a little confusing, but if you just take your time and look at it, you remember that you always want one in between that is not glued to each other. So this one I'm burnishing the last one here, and when I pull it up, you'll see that I have the little quarter inch on each side. I have a half inch hinge sticking up with a space in between and the one in the middle standing up. So that is our hinge piece. Next I'm going to lay them flat and burnish them each direction so that I know that they will 
move side to side easily. So that's going to end our tutorial video number one. We'll start up in number two, adding our pages to the hinge and putting the hinge in the book. So check back in the next day or so and I'll have the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.